All right, what's up, everybody? Hutch here, and this is module 2-7, percent error notes. Uh, remember in lesson one, we talked about uh, percent change. This is percent error, and here's how they're different. The percent change was comparing uh, the uh, amount of change from the start. Okay, so they wanted to know from the starting point, how much change did we have, either positive or negative. Percent error is doing something different. Percent error is um, calculating uh, and comparing the amount of error between your prediction and the actual um, and comparing it to what really happened. Okay, so we want to know uh, what was your sort of predicted error compared to the actual or what really happened, okay? And so that's why we're using the formula amount of error over actual, okay? Um, but we are going to do the same process where that creates a decimal and then we change it to a percent. How do we change it per to a percent? Well, let's write that down, right? Uh, we multiply by 100 or the trick is move the decimal two places to the right. Okay, so make that little note in there. All right, so we're gonna go through this process. Um, it is a pretty like set routine. You just have to organize yourself a little bit, okay? Um, one thing to be aware of is that the amount of error is always going to be written as a positive number, okay? Because if we predicted that I don't know, something was going to be 5, but it was actually 10, the amount of error is a difference of 5. We are 5 off between our prediction and what actually happened. The same as if we predicted 10 and the actual amount was 5, the amount of error is still 5 off. So we're not dealing with negatives when we're talking about amount of error. So you're always just going to take the big number minus the small to find out how far off you were for that numerator. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and uh, try this out. So it says a contractor estimates that it'll take him 16 hours. So this is my estimation. So let's go ahead and label that an E. Okay. Uh, in actual, in actual, it took him 12.5 hours. So that's my A. Okay. And remember that our formula for this is the amount of error over the actual. So let me go ahead and grab this. You could do the same if you want. Copy it and paste down here just so we can see it as we get started with this first bit here. Okay. All right. So here's the process. I want to know, well, what's my amount of error? How far off was I from my prediction or my estimate to my actual? Okay, and so that looks like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and label this as the percent error equals, and we're going to go ahead and set this up. So we have 16 minus 12.5, and so that'll tell us how far off we were, and we're going to compare it to what actually happened, and my actual is 12.5. So let's go ahead and uh, Figure this out. So 16 minus 12.5 is 3.5 divided by what really happened, and we get 0 0.28. Now remember, after we find the decimal, then we need to change it to a percent so we can officially represent it the right way. Okay, so that's two swoops to the right, and you can see we have a 28% error. And that's your answer, okay? All right, let's go ahead and uh, do this check. If you wanna pause and try it, you can, or just follow along. Okay, so remember our first goal is to read and find the estimate and find the actual. So uh, they're going on a trip. The GPS estimated it would take them 4.25 hours. So I'm gonna tag that with the E. Um, it actually took them five hours. There's my actual, find the percent error. So try to remember the formula. It's the amount of error over the actual, okay? So let's go ahead and write percent error equals, and then 
write your equation, okay? So the amount of air, how far off was I from my prediction of 4.25 to the actual 5? Well, let's find out. I would do 5 minus 4.25, Okay, just big minus small, uh, and then over the actual, and the actual is 5. So you just got to be careful for that part. That's why the labeling is really good. Okay, so I already know it's the difference between that is 0. 0.75, but, you know, I don't want to make any mistakes. So I'm going to double check anyway, okay, and then divide it by 5. And so we have 0. 0.15 as the decimal, but remember we need to turn it into a percent with two swoops to the right. And so it's a 15% error. Okay, and then go ahead and circle that. Okay, and that makes sense. We weren't that far off uh, from our prediction to the actual, so that makes sense. It's a very small error. All right, now the apply um, is going to take us back to an old lesson um, about pre predicting uh, using proportions. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. We're still uh, finding percent error. Okay, so it says a school newspaper estimates that their basketball team will win 23 out of 25 games. So here's my estimate. Um, I'm going to write that as a fraction over here. So my estimate is 23 out of 25. But let's label things. We know that's important. Um, so that's 23 wins out of 25 games. Okay, that's what we're estimating. Uh, so let's see what the actual is. So the actual is says after 10 games, they've won eight. Okay, so that's eight wins. That's why label's important in 10 games. Okay, um, what will the percent of error be? So notice they say, what will it be when the season is over if the team continues winning at this rate? Okay, so here's the problem. We can't really compare the 23 to the 8 because this one happened in 25 games and this one happened in 10. So we need to change this one uh, so that we can compare sort of like apples to apples. We, can, we need them to be out of the same games to actually find how close our prediction was. And they're giving us permission because they say if it continues at this rate – to go ahead and make that future prediction uh, with a proportion. So let's go ahead and set that up. Uh, we know that uh, we can just make a proportion and predict the future amount, okay? And just change it to the 25 games. They're saying this is a proportional situation. Go ahead and find the true actual uh, if we continue at this rate and get to 25 games, okay? Uh, so I can find the multiplier like we've done before. Some of you liked doing that process, okay? Uh, by going, wondering 10 times what is 25. And you can see the multiplier is 2.5. So it's really not uh, too bad. Um, I'm gonna stick with the means extremes because we know that works every time and we've been really good at that, okay? So let's go ahead and I'll just label this variable W and I'll do go ahead and do the cross multiplying. So we have 10w equals 25 times 8 is 200. We know to isolate the variable, we divide both sides by 10. And we end up with an actual wins of 20 wins. Okay. Uh, so there we go. We have this is sort of... This is our amount of wins here, and this is our actual amount of wins. So we have an estimate, estimated amount of 23 wins and an actual amount of 20 wins. So the question is, well, if I predicted 23 wins, but we actually only got 20, what is the percent error? Okay, so let's follow our formula. Remember, that's up here. Amount of error compared to what actually happened. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so my amount of error, well, we could write 23 minus 20, but I think that's sort of easy to just say, well, the amount of error is three win, or is three. So we have, let's go ahead and write it out though, percent error equals three. 
Let me spread this out just a little bit here. The percent error is 3 okay, over what was the actual amount. Well, the actual amount was 20. Okay, so we had an error of 3 out of 20. Okay, and let's go ahead and calculate what that is. 3 divided by 20. Okay, so that equals this decimal, 0 0.15, which as a percent, because we're calculating percent error, is 15%. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and write error and circle it. So it's a 15% error, which makes sense because what? We are only three off. Um, that's not a very big error. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and you can try the check. It's the same process. So I would recommend pausing. Uh, and then you can follow along uh, and check your work afterwards. Or if you would like to just do it with me to get that extra practice, you can do it that way as well. All right, so here we go. It's predicted that the softball team will win 35 out of 50 games. So this is my estimate. Okay, um, I'm going to write it as a fraction. So I'm going to label the estimate here. So 35 wins is the estimate um, if we play 50 games. Okay, let's find what actually happened. So the actual is after 20 games, they won 16. So the actual is 16 won or wins, we'll call it. So we're saying the same thing out of 20 games. Okay, so uh, can I compare? My prediction was 35 wins. My actual was 16 wins. Why can't I use those numbers? Okay, if you said because it's not out of the same amount of games, I was right. Okay, uh, so we need to find out how many wins the actual is if we play 50 games. Okay, um, and we know that uh, we can go ahead and set up a proportion because it says, hey, the team's going to continue to win at this rate. So it allows us to do that. So let's set up a proportion and determine how many wins we would have with 50 games if we follow that same proportional trend there. Okay, And we'll label this W as a variable. Let's go ahead and do our cross multiplying to figure out how many wins uh, we actually earned. So we have 20W equals whatever 50 times 16 is, 800. And then isolate the variable, divide by 20 on both sides. And we can answer the question. So the actual wins equals 800 divided by 20, which is 40. There we go, just double checking. All right, so there's 40 wins. So now what we're doing is we're comparing the estimated amount of wins compared to the actual amount of wins, okay? Um, we can compare these numbers because they're both out of 50 games, okay? So let's go ahead and solve this now. We know the equation is uh, the amount of error over what actually happened. So um, go ahead and look at those two numbers. So what is the amount of error between our prediction and the actual? So that amount of error is 5. Let's go ahead and write our percent error equation here. So the amount of error is 5, okay? And what was the actual, okay? Because we're comparing it to the actual. Well, the actual was 40, okay? And so let's get our decimal. 5 divided by 40 is 0 0.125, which as a decimal, or as a percent then, multiply by 100, we have a 12.5% error. And there we go. Okay, so that's how you handle those apply problems um, that are not uh, giving you a proper prediction and actual. You're having to uh, sort of extend the actual to make sure you can have an equal comparison. Okay, all right, let's head to your practice homework. Um, the only annoying ones are going to be those apply ones. Okay, so we have a little bit more today, but you'll be able to uh, fly through these. So your first one uh, 
here, we'll do the left side together. Okay, so remember the process. Um, Doug estimates that the soccer team will win seven. There's my estimate. Uh, the team actually wins 10 games. There's my actual. Uh, we know we want to find the percent error. Okay, uh, and how do you do that? Well, percent error, remember, is comparing the amount of error compared to what actually happened. Okay, so we have 10 minus 7, okay, over what actually happened, which was 10, okay? Or we could have just written 3 divided by 10, okay? So what is 3 divided by 10? 3 divided by 10 is 0 0.3. That's decimal form. We need to change it to percent form with two swoops to the right, which gives us a 30% error. And we're done. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, still another example one. Uh, we're doing all the same things until we get to the pain in the button apply problems. Okay, so it's a whole bunch of example ones. All right, they estimate the wait time for the roller coaster is 35. There's my estimate. The actual wait time is here. So what was the percent error? Okay, so we know that to calculate percent error, we want to know, well, what was the uh, amount of error between my prediction and the actual? So that was 55.5 minus 35 will give me my amount of error. And then I want to compare it to what actually happened. So go back up, look where the A is and that's 55.5. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Minus 35. So I was 20.5 off between my estimate and what really happened. Let's compare it to the actual of 55.5. And we have a huge decimal. So we have 0 0.369. So we'll say 37. Uh, we better get because they're asking us to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So we need to get a little bit of decimal in here. Three, six, nine. We're going to be swooping two spots to the right. Uh, so let's get three, six, nine, three. Let's get one more here. So that'll round to seven if I cut it there. Okay, so let's just get that amount and that'll help us see sort of what we need to get. We're going to do two swoops to the right, and that gets us a 36 point, and we're rounding the answer to the nearest tenth of a percent, so 36.9 percent error, okay? So we really only needed to get, get four decimal spots when we did this part. Okay, to get what we need for the end. Let's go ahead and circle that, and there we go. All right, a jar of marbles should contain 100. It actually contained 99. This percent error is going to be really small, right? So here's my estimate of what it should be. Here's my actual. Let's go ahead and write our formula. So percent error equals what was my percent of, or my amount of error? Well, it was only one, 100 minus 99. What was the actual? The actual was 99. So one divided by 99 is that funky decimal. So we have 0 0.0101. And that's all we, we learned. That's all we need is to get four decimal places out, okay? Uh, so let's go to equals, change it to the percent, and we have 1.0 percent because we're rounding up, we're rounding the nearest hundredth this time. Uh, so because of that, we did need that extra one there just to know what's going on. All right, so we have 1.0, that's the tenths place, 1 that gets us to the hundredth place. So I guess that's something to be careful about. Error, okay, really small error. All right, number seven, okay, what's the percent error for the amount of snowfall? Okay, we have our predicted, which would be our estimate, and our actual, okay? So same thing as before, what's your percent error? The percent error is the amount of error, which this one, 
I don't have the solid mental math on this one. So 10.25 minus 6.75 over the actual. So revisit what the actual is, 10.25. So let's go ahead and calculate this. Minus 6.75. So the amount of error was 3.5. Divide it and compare to the actual amount. And we get this long decimal of, and let's look what we're running to. We're running to the tenths place. So 0 0.34146. I'm just going to stop it there because uh, we don't need to round that up or anything. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it into a percent. Two swoops to the right. And we're rounding the nearest tenth. Okay. Uh, so we have 34.1. Uh, and if I'm cutting it there, the 4 is not going to make me raise it up. So there we go, 34.1% error. So this really becomes the hard part is doing the correct rounding and things like that. All right, so you have 2, 4, 6, and 8 to do. Um, let's go ahead and do number 9, and then you can work on number 10 uh, on your own. Actually, I'm going to leave number 9 for you because it's just like what we did in the notes, okay? Um, 